Okay, uh, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communication. I am here with the technical salesperson, Ross from Peter E. Schmidt. How are you, Ross? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming in. So, uh, briefly, tell us a little bit about Peter E. Schmidt, because you guys represent a lot of brands. We do. So, the Peter E. Schmidt company represents uh, six, somewhere between 16 and 18 brands in the New York City metro area, mm -hmm. uh, most notably Shore, QSC, Digico, EAW, and of course, uh, why we're here today, uh, Synthax, SKB, and KM. Got it. Okay, great. So, we'll touch base on some of the, the items in this rack. Sure. So, just Let's start here, because I know this is the rack mount version of this, which we'll get to later. Um, but why don't you talk to us just a little bit about the, the flexiverter and the multiverter, and then we'll get up here to the, the RME and the digigram. Sure. So what we have here uh, is the Apsis multiverter, 448 channels by 448 channels, uh, which is, is effectively 64 channels of seven different uh, code formats. You can do... Uh, full matrix mixer on that and format conversion. It's also triply redundant in terms of its power. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can take word clock basically from anywhere, any of those sources, and um, send out word clock as well. Uh, and you also have the ability to do your sample rate conversion and clocking uh, from the front panel. You can also control this via USB, Ethernet, um, and also MIDI. You can recall your presets from the front of the panel or uh, what I was talking about before, uh, MIDI. And um, you also have a headphone jack where you can actually audition mm. any of the inputs to the entire device and any of the outputs as well. Mm -hmm. um, underneath that, we have the recently released Flexiverter series. Take all of the technology from the multiverter and just scale it down. Uh, so you're doing format to format rather than format to any format. Um, so it brings down your cost, your scale, your size, uh, and you can actually also now use these as an extension of the multiverter if you need additional inputs or outputs. I have the Dante and the AES-3 here. Mm -hmm. So that's actually two DB25 on the back mm -hmm. for AES-316 channels, and then that you could bring that in as an extension. Mm -hmm. Got it, okay. So now let's, let's get up to here. Let's talk about this RME Fireface UCX. Yes, so this is the Fireface UCX-2. You've got two mic line inputs, two line inputs, and then on the back here you have an additional four line inputs, six balanced line outputs, MIDI in, out, ADAT in, out, word clock is either in or out, and then AES, EBU, in and out with SpeedIF. We also have our USB connection, which is typical on most RME devices, and this uh, little do-rack here. You can plug in up to a two terabyte drive and record. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how long that would last, but I don't think you're going to run out of space yeah. for quite a while. And should point out that it is uh, does take 12 volt DC. So yes. it's, it's something that could be an affordable system on a rack. Absolutely. Um, either as a computer interface or as a standalone recorder. Mm -hmm. And uh, as with most of the RME line, it uh, works with Total Mix, which would be your actual on PC GUI. Uh, that is your on-PC GUI, not the software to operate this. Mm -hmm. So you can set up on your PC, disconnect, and keep going. Awesome. And it's going to retain your settings. Cool. Okay. So potentially, for we're mostly in the location sound world, mm -hmm. but potentially something great for playback. Absolutely. Um, or even as a, as a backup recorder, standalone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for eight channels analog and maybe an additional two channels AES. Yes. Go for it. No time code, but no that's time not code. necessarily what we're looking for. Right. Um, all right, so now tell us a little bit about this digigram here. The sure, Akoya. so, yes. So this is the Akoya Talk from the Digigram line. Um, digigram is a codec company uh, traditionally used in broadcast applications. This guy is your broadcast from anywhere. Um, power in or dual redundant hot swappable power. Uh, there are two ethernet ports, uh, if you can get a shot of that. Two Ethernet ports, those could be set up to hit two different ISPs to send out. Also, two SIM card slots, so you could send via two different networks uh, out. And then it also can connect via Wi-Fi. Uh, so if you need data, you've got five different ways to get it out. 
all of which can be concurrent as uh, concurrent backups. Mm -hmm. On the front of the unit here, we've got two XLR inputs, line or mic with uh, Phantom and a high pass. Mm -hmm. And then you also have four headphone outputs. Uh, from a headphone standpoint, you have one for each of the dedicated talkers and then two for your uh, guest. And then on the back of the unit, we have XLR in, two pair, XLR out, two pair, and you also could use those as your AES. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, we also have uh, GPIO on the unit, which lends it a lot to the uh, broadcast application use. Um, what's really exciting about this, you could send somebody out who only knows how to power it on and plug things in. And when they sign in, you can actually control it remotely from a Koya Connect. So mm -hmm. I'll just back up here and uh, go to my connection screen. So I'm logged in, and when I logged in, it brought down all of my settings for this device from the cloud via the web. Um, and I was ready to go. Everything that I had saved up and queued was available to me. And if somebody were uh, remotely controlling this, they'd be able to change any of the settings you can change on the unit itself. Uh, from an audio setting standpoint, you can control your inputs and outputs, your mic and line in, and uh, your auxiliary input. And then for your outputs, you just have a simple headphone level. And then you do have the ability to matrix mix any of your outputs as well. Uh, so you know each user can get all the settings and things that they actually need and none that they don't. So is this useful application for broadcast, so like an NBA game? Is it for a podcast? What's the, the use case here? Um, broadcast for an NBA game is typical use case. If you do have the money for your podcast, you might as well go for it. Um, but of course, the, the true market is being able to send a broadcaster out to be able to cover live at a sporting event or from anywhere on the planet uh, and be able to connect and just go. And what about like uh, ADR for actors that can't come into the studio? You could do that. Uh, from a latency standpoint, you may be a little bit further out than you would want to be. However, for that application, rather than going all the way up to this, you could use um, a web link. So we have the ability via Okoya Connect as well to just do a link that you'd be able to bring down and log into your web browser and choose your audio interface on your computer for that remote individual and they'd be able to listen and talk and you can so in the larger scale digigram and akoya have the ability to be one to one one to many or broadcast um, and so you could also use this um, in an application where you're actually setting this up to your web stream uh, down here i have the x link um, which I've previously set up at home and connected to Last.fm, been able to plug in whatever content I want or uh, to give a webinar live and have folks, instead of using Zoom audio, be able to actually use this mm. to just listen in at a much higher quality and a much higher bit rate. Mm. Okay, awesome. Ross, thank you very much. Absolutely. All right. Um, so, uh, Peter, any questions, comments in the... Uh... All right, very good. Um, so again, thank you. Um, you can watch this video and others at gothamsound.tv. As always, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and contact us at info at gothamsound.com with questions um, or if you want to arrange a demo for anything you've seen here today. Thank you so much for watching.